Hello, Aston Hans Elliot here. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about future cities. When you think about the future, you tend to go very for, far forward in our minds to like a time that is um, unrecognisable. And when you think of the theme of a theme or a title like future cities, my mind definitely um, wanders straight to kind of like Blade Runner landscapes or like flying driverless cars or space and stuff like that, which everything I love really, uh, because actually I'm a real sci-fi geek. But that sort of thing makes us in the future in our minds. But when we think about the future like that, it becomes disassociated from us as an individual. And we don't know how we got from here to there. And even less so, we don't know who made those changes and we don't know who made the decisions to make those changes. And this results in you feeling like the ideas for changes to contribute to a future of a city can't be yourself, it can't be you. And when we think about the future being really, really far ahead, um, when actually it could just be tomorrow. Now, if you think of the word art, it comes up ideas of kind of like white walled galleries. You might think of some um, contemporary artists might spring to mind, such as maybe someone like Andy Warhol and his Marilyn Monroe uh, screen prints. I'll just show my screen as I've got some pictures here. Yeah, maybe um, Frida Kahlo's um, self-portraits. Or another example could be um, David Hockney and his painting A Bigger Splash. And when sort of like this, it's difficult to see art as an inference on the construction or the building of a future city. Art can succinctly portray the mindset of a community in one image. Um, and it's the process of getting to that image that's the most important. So art allows you to imagine and dream. And the very process of imagining something is art. And thinking up alternative reality um, or voicing an idea of what if. And we'll be working with this idea of social dreaming in this workshop. So the consistent thing in a city is people. The people who inhabit it, the people who use it. And each person has ideas and dreams and a voice. Ideas can be pared down into a phrase or a couple of words, maybe into a post or designed, and it can be very powerful. And it's a very powerful art form, form that can get ideas out there into the world. Maybe it's something you feel important. Maybe it's um, an alternative way of looking at things. Uh, maybe something happened in your area and, and you would like to show your support for it or something. So in this workshop, um, we're going to use influences of contemporary art and the social dreaming of design to create our own text-based art. So first of all, sort out your space. And we're gonna be going doing this with collage. I know that you um, have already done this technique, I think, in one of the other workshops. If, if you preferred, you could do it with pens if you want to. But um, I, the reason I like to do it with collage and stuff like that is because you already have kind of like set up fonts and stuff like that and all the colours like um, this takeaway menu is really great. It has that really great font there already kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then this, this here as well and all the different colours and stuff. So um, get all your old like newspapers and magazines and stuff like that or like takeaway menus like I've got and then just start cutting up bits and pieces and then um, spreading them about kind of thing because they might influence you as you're kind of like thinking up your idea and stuff like that kind of thing and you might take things out and bring things back in. And there's a couple of things I want you to think about yourself while you're doing this. So what out of these four things is the best thing that describes you? Either Kickstarter, Catalyst, change maker or deep thinker. And I also want you to think about what you've been thinking about uh, this time and this moment and um, what you've been feeling around these times. Right, so I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. So this is um, an artist called The Fandango Kid. Her work is all quite, um, is all narrative driven, a lot of text-based stuff. She does very large scale, but she also does like posters and paste ups and stuff like that as well. I think this one says, make your legacy golden and it's in New York and Williamsburg. And then there's this one as well. I think this one's in London. And notice the colour as well. She uses a lot of like very, very bright colours. Um, so when you're looking through and cutting stuff out as well, like look at what colours there are and stuff. And if that means something to the message or anything like that as well that you're going to come up with. These are like smaller pieces that she's made. And you can buy those as kind of cards. Um, and these ones are the kind of paste ups that I was talking about. She has that very strong font. 
very colourful again. This is a piece that um, she made that I, I, when I was actually working with her in a gallery, and I think it's very apt for these times where it says standing alone, souls connected in the middle of there. Again, very bright colours. And you can see the, the yellow kind of like changes from one side to the other here. So maybe you'll find a background somewhere that you want to like use um, as, as kind of like the background to your text, maybe in, in, um, in the magazines and stuff like that. She also did some workshops with us, which was based on the idea of kind of belonging and home. And these are some of the stuff that the kids came up with. And uh, it was really great working with them. And also for, from that workshop, a participant, uh, a participant of the workshop um, came up with this uh, phrase, in our community we trust, which she um, took and then put onto masks that, 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 that she's now selling as well. So yeah, they're really great. So another example we have is Tracy Emmon. She makes these like very personal statements in her, in her own handwriting and then makes them into neon signs. She says um, neon is, is very emotional for everybody. She's been working with neon since kind of like the early 90s um, and she's been using the medium to share her past and thoughts and deepest desires and then makes these neon sculptures. And it's quite interesting because obviously neon is quite like would take a long time to make and it's quite an interesting fact that she kind of used that medium to show something that was like kind of like a very passing thought kind of thing um, and these are very deeply personal but they're also universally relatable um the things that she says um like a lot of people would kind of like be able to identify with with the with the written pieces in here and stuff like that so um so in terms of this one i promise to love you and trust yourself and um so yeah, that, that the idea of they, if those were out in a city or something like that, the idea that people would feel less alone knowing that someone had the same experiences with them. So another example of how kind of like text-based arts can be very, very powerful um, and kind of like contribution to the idea of kind of like attitudes and stuff. So another example, um, well, at the moment, everyone is going to be very aware of the traction that Black Lives Matter has, um, movement has managed to like get globally at the moment. Um, a lot of people are kind of like making their own signs and putting them in their windows. But I wanted to show you this other artist. In, in America, there it was this art project called The Last Billboard. And um, each month, a different artist was invited to use this big long billboard and have a custom it had a custom design rail system and then they would ch with wooden letters which they would change by hand and um, these are some of the ones that um, other artists uh, did do not react to this um, some people just like played with the letters and kind of like had and moved them around and stuff like that it didn't have to be a statement but the artist i wanted to show you was uh, is alicia b wormsley she she actually had hers removed because the property landlord was under pressure from the area developers and um, her billboard read there are black people in the future and there's an art movement called afrofuturism if you think of black panther that's probably the easiest thing to think of um, that's that it's kind of based on and um, what they say about that is afrofuturism dares to suggest that not only will black people exist in the future but they will be makers and shapers of it too. And I thought it was very fitting for this, um, for our text-based art for, for future cities workshop. So I'm getting a good collection of, of fonts here. I also found, I found this, uh, trying to think of in terms of like your background and stuff like that kind of thing. You can either cut up lots of different colors and stuff like that, maybe line them or something, uh, make it into a kind of like stripe or like lots of different colors and stuff. Or you could find a whole background to, to use as your, your background to your text. I found this one. So if I was to use the text to cover up the man in the middle of there, that would be that nice landscape. And um, I wanted to show an example based on this. There is an art, a, a photographer called Wolfgang Tillmans. And in the build up to the um, 2016 EU referendum vote, he made a series of posters with text over the top. He made a series, of, it was his photographs and he put text over the top of encouraging people to vote. And I really like these ones that were over photos that were taken of, which I'm assuming is out of the airplane window. And um, it made the message feel kind of like very airy and like kind of gave you time to think about, to make your own opinion of, of, of what it wasn't very in your face and telling you to do things kind of thing. It was like a different kind of like approach, which I thought was very interesting. The, another person that I wanted to show you is, uh, and this is probably a piece you'll definitely recognise in some form or another, is Robert Indiana's um, original love print. He is an American artist associated with the pop movement. And actually this was, it was just made as for a Christmas card, but it came very f famous. 
obviously there were sculptures made of it and that's him in front of the, he looks cute doesn't he uh, and in 1973 it was actually chosen to go on a u.s post, postal stamp and it sold the most of any um a special distance edition u.s stamp ever and i wanted to point out this picture because i want you to look at the colors so the story goes with this picture. This picture is actually about how much he, miss, he misses his dad. Um, and the green represents the rolling plains and the blue represents the stretching blue sky of the Indiana state where he grew up. Also, it's, it's said that the red, blue and green was influenced by his boyfriend at the time, Elworth Kelly's paintings, which is actually called Red, Blue and Green. And if we look at that, you can definitely see some influence there, I feel. And the last piece I wanted to show you is actually one of my own work. I did a participate pay to project. It was a year long, long project working with um, an LGBT um, Q plus um, youth groups in Hampshire and they're called Breakout Youth. Um, and the idea was to get them to create work and explore the history of their community and think about how they would want their community to move forward into the future together. And their designs were amalgamated into a badge, first of all, I don't know if you can see that. It says you belong here. Um, it may be a little bit, uh, blurry there but you can see there's all the different colours in this kind of grid system and this is another thing about how it's important about colour because actually these represent about kind of like six or seven um, LGBT uh, different LGBT community flags so you can see the top one there is the um, the rainbow gay flag and uh, we've got the trans flag here uh, we've got the bisexual flag in there somewhere and stuff like that there's lots of different ones so that's another example of what um, how that uh, colour is important and also you can see how the, um, the Y, the L and the H kind of connect up. So you can kind of like put your fonts together if you get lots of them and um, kind of like jigsaw them together and see if they fit together nicely and stuff like that. So I'll just share my screen again. So the project was actually expanded and that badge was turned into um, a four, book, four foot by four foot neon sign. And it's now a permanent piece in the foyer of a gallery called, in Southampton called the John Hanson Gallery. Um, and it's meant to be a form of a kind of beacon or um, like a back signal to people that don't feel kind of like comfortable going into spaces like that, such as, such as the LGBT some, community sometimes feels. It was influenced by a Black Mirror episode, which is kind of hilarious because I hate Black Mirror because it really scares me. And uh, the, the episode was called San Junipero. And um, it's about these um, two women looking through each other, time traveling through decades looking for each other. And they meet in a bar called Tucker's. Uh, which is filmed in pink and blue um, for the bisexual flag colours. It was based on this uh, neon sign at the back. So as a callback, I think, to uh, my past work and a little back signal to the, to the young people I work with, um, with, with in Breakout Youth, I think my text-based um, artwork is going to remind us that you still belong here. Um, and I think that's going to be my message to the city that, uh, that I'm going to make today. So. I'd really love to see some of the work that you make yourself um, share some stuff with us on, um, on social media if you like. And uh, yeah, love to see what you come up with.